And uh, I think we'll move now to the next uh, uh, speaker. And so I have the privilege of uh, introducing uh, Mr. Tom Neustadt, who was here at, in this uh, audience uh, and was here at that event and spoke at that event. So uh, Mr. Tom Neustadt is, uh, has suffered from the effects of diabetes for 20 years and uh, um, was found to be an excellent candidate for pancreas transplantation. And in 2014, he received his pancreas transplant and was there to celebrate with us and spoke at this event. And I will say that the hope meets gratitude uh, theme for this event was, uh, came out of his mouth, was his idea. And we're very proud that uh, he uh, uh, was able to um, demonstrate that uh, life-saving gift and was able to speak at this event. And we're very privileged to have him here. So thanks and uh, join me in welcoming Mr. Tom Newstead. I am <laughs> very used to being talked about, but these last few minutes have been remarkable to me because usually I'm not in the room when people are talking about me. <laughs> what Dr. Odorico mentioned was me on many different occasions. On January 5th, 2014, and into the wee hours of January 6th, my life changed drastically when I received a pancreas transplant. I just had little idea of how drastic that change would be. It was just three short months before that my wife Lori and I made the trip from Oshkosh to Madison to go through a very extensive evaluation. And it was at that time that I met Dr. John Odorico and Nancy Radke. Lori and I were both convinced that anyone other than those two people would never do when it came time for my pancreas transplant. Well, it didn't quite work out that way. I still had Nancy Radke as my transplant coordinator, and she followed me before, during, and after very faithfully, and that has been a tremendous gift to us. But Dr. Odorico was not the surgeon that night. And I was told that the surgeon would be somebody by the name of Solinger. Never heard of him. <laughs> but I thought, yeah, he probably knows something about what he's doing, and you saw his name mentioned several times in the last presentation. Rather strange man, I thought, this stranger with the German accent. I remembered that. And as I was prepped for surgery, I met Dr. Solinger for the first time. And he indicated at that point that he would be working with the donated pancreas for quite a while prior to the surgery. And if I wanted to see that organ before he actually transplanted it, to let him know when I got into the OR and he'd be happy to show it to me. <laughs> I was interested. And when I came into the operating room, I mentioned my interest to him and he very gently held up that precious gift. Of course, by that time, I was totally trashed. <laughs> and all I could really do at that point was to sing. So mustering my very best high school German, I sang. Ich weiß nicht, was soll es bedeuten, dass ich so traurig bin. And on and on to the very end of De Lorelei. And to this day, I have to wonder, was that smile hidden behind his surgical mask really a smile? Or was it a grimace? I'm not really sure to this day. But despite my drug-induced bravado, 
I was extremely hopeful and beyond grateful. In the last 29 months since my transplant, I have been given many opportunities to publicly share my experience. Many different audiences, many different venues. To other pancreas recipients, to hospitals honored for their work in organ and tissue procurement and transplantation, to organ procurement professionals, to the city of Rochester, where I now live, to donor families, and today to patient health care providers of all different kinds, all different audiences, each bringing a very unique perspective each experiencing unique emotions, needs, expectations. But one thing each of those audiences hold in common. Each involves the space and the very moment where hope and gratitude meet. To this space, you, each of you, bring hope. I speak as one recipient whose life has been given hope. Hope as a result of your expertise, your compassion, your devotion, your commitment, your patience. And these are just a few of the hope builders that you bring to this space and to this moment. But not only do you, each of you, bring hope, you are hope. You are hope to people like me. And for each of you, in some way, all too often, you have to be that hope at the most inconvenient times, times that you have set aside to be with family or friends, holidays, 2 a.m. in the morning, times when you are tired or stressed or wish that you could be anyplace else. These are the very times when hope becomes so real to patients like me. And to this space and to this moment, I bring gratitude, for I am indeed grateful. I am no longer diabetic after 25 years. I no longer have to take insulin in any form. I enjoy good health, which has allowed a geographic change as we moved from Wisconsin to Minnesota. I can now invest my time and my energy in activities that really matter to me, like spending time with patients under hospice care or transplant hematology patients at the Mayo Clinic. I no longer have to travel with orange juice as my constant companion out of fear that another low will rob me of energy or the ability to communicate rationally or think critically. I no longer have a spouse that lives in the fear that this might be the additional occasion to yet one more trip to the emergency department or the reality that this time I, I just might not make it. I am more engaged in the lives of my family. I think I laugh more. I know I cry more. In short, 
I know more joy. And I am grateful. But I'm also learning that it is not enough just to say I'm grateful. I must live a life that exudes gratitude. It is the difference between doing gratitude and being gratitude, day by day, moment by moment. Living a life that is immersed in the spirit of gratitude, and that immersion begins with my donor. That's what keeps me grounded in my gratitude. I know nothing about my donor. No name, no city, no state, no age, no gender, no life story. And I respect that. And maybe that'll change someday. Or maybe it won't. But either way, I have now come to an understanding that if I am going to be grounded in my gratitude, I need to realize that what I have received is more than a surgical procedure that opened me up and placed within me a new organ. I was given a tremendous gift that brought to me new life. And I need to truly embrace that gift in light of all that that has brought to me. So in an attempt to embrace that gift more fully, I have chosen to embrace that unknown donor more fully. That person whose life story I may never know. To help me express gratitude, I have chosen to create, at least in my mind, facts that serve to fill in the blanks regarding my donor. So now that donor has gender. And she is 21. And I've also given her a name. And I can tell you, I talk to her every day, at least once a day. Before my feet even hit the floor, first thing in the morning, I place both hands on my abdomen and I say, once more I embrace the gift of my pancreas. Thank you for making that gift possible. I will not knowingly abuse it or take it for granted. And I will do all that I can to love and to serve those around me. And then at the end of the day, I now ask myself this question. What have I done today to show love and gratitude and service? Now, maybe to you, these practices seem silly, but they have helped me embrace the gift that I have been given, grounded me in my daily gratitude. And today, in this space, and at this moment, I am keenly aware that between my donor, my real donor, and me, was Dr. Solinger. Hope. And between other donors and other recipients, you, each of you, are a conduit of hope, connecting the gift with the grateful, allowing hope and gratitude to meet. You see, gratitude and certainly hope are not only a matter of science. They are also a matter of soul, however you choose to define that term. 
Yes, hope and gratitude are a matter of intangible spirit. But a spirit that seeks to be tangible, that seeks to be touched. And that's really what your work is all about. And so is mine. Thank you.